Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. So for today's cards, I started off with my Wendy Vecchi station. This is like a metal crafting mat and I have started using it in conjunction with my Waffle Flower Water Media Mat because the metal mat is obviously magnetic. So I can use the magnets on top of the Waffle Flower Mat and they'll hold stencils in place. So I masked off what will be the back of these cards because I don't want to get any embellishment mousse or anything on the back of the card. And then I am holding a Honeybee Stamps stained glass stencil in place with the magnets. And then I'm going to be using Tonic's uh, Poppy Pink Embellishment Mousse. Now with their embellishment mousse, I highly, highly recommend using either press and seal or just plastic wrap, possibly even tin foil, but I find press and seal works the best on top of the jar before putting the lid on. It really helps to seal in the product. Um, these jars are big and like, it, like they last forever. However, the problem is, is they can dry out easily because they're water-based. So one, sealing the jars helps a lot. And another thing that helps is having distilled or purified water. I always recommend distilled or purified only because there could be, you know, goodness knows what in just regular tap water that could develop mold if, you know, over time. So distilled water is the way to go. So I spray that as well. And with the embellishment mousse, you can thin it out to whatever consistency you want. You can mix it with a palette knife. You can apply it in a bunch of different ways. For these cards, all I'm using is one of Nouveau's little blending sponges and just kind of pouncing the sponge over the stencil. And I could use the palette knife or whatever and done a thicker application, but I wanted this really thin because then it dries really quickly, like really, really quickly. And it's just quick and easy. Plus I kind of wanted the texture it, using the little blending sponge like this with the embellishment mousse. It gives it just a very, very soft texture. It's subtle because this is kind of shimmery. It's a very thin application, but it just gives it that little extra something. So I just keep picking up the embellishment mousse with the blending sponge. I'm kind of pouncing it on my medium mat here just to, um, kind of thin out any like little chunks if any decide to pick up with the sponge and then I pounced it over the stencil remove the stencil and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with my second card just kind of pouncing it on there and again you can thin this out with a little bit of water if you want it, it just depends on what you're going for consistency wise so with this and with this blending sponge I will wash the sponge just in my sink with a little bit of soap same as I'll do the stencil the embellishment mousse washes out really, really easily. Um, when I'm working with the embellishment mousse, I really like to make sure to wash off, whether it's sponge, palette knife, or anything, just so that it doesn't harden, but especially on the sponge. So using a little bit of soap cleans it up. So again, with the embellishment mousse, I like to give it a couple spritzes with that distilled water. Then I put my press and seal over that, seal it up good, put on the lid. It's good to go. This has been working for me for quite a while now, and I'm finding that my um, embellishment mousse containers aren't drying out like they used to before I started sealing them up extra because the lid doesn't fully seal it. So hopefully that helps those that were having issues with that. So I've set my backgrounds. I've washed my stencil, washed the sponge, set those aside to dry. My backgrounds are drying. So now I'm using the Everything Wonderful stamp set. This is from Honeybee Stamps. This was designed by Emily Midget and I just, I've literally had it sitting here for weeks waiting to use it because of it's a large floral. I love large florals. I can never get enough of them. And this one is gorgeous. So I am stamping it onto the smooth side of Distress watercolor paper with Ink on 3's Juicy Clear Embossing Ink. I'm actually stamping it three times. I'm finding if I'm a little less impatient, <laughs> Because usually I'll just stamp it once and go. But especially with large stamps with a lot of detail, if I take the time, because I've got it in the Misty already, like I'm using my mini Misty here to stamp it. If I take the time to stamp it a couple times or even up to three times, I get all that detail. Because especially when you're using clear embossing, you can't really see it. And then you go to pour the embossing powder over it and you end up finding out you missed stamping however much of the image and then it's just a waste. So stamped it a few times, coated it with detail white embossing powder. And I did this twice since I'm making two cards. And then both of these I am melting with my heat tool, which doesn't really look like much of anything on camera because it's just white on white. But of course, I really like having the heat embossing when I'm doing any watercoloring because it gives those little raised edges so I can move around and color quicker and everything's a little bit more contained. 
So then for the actual watercoloring, I am using some Nouveau Aquaflow brushes. And I'm actually like kind of squeezing and scribbling them just into the wells of my water media mat rather than color directly with these. I find sometimes I would I just prefer to scribble them off to the side like this and then pick it up with a brush. That just gives me a lot more control over how much color I want to add because I knew I wanted to layer these colors. So I'm starting with the blue and this is the blue velvet color and this is an extremely intense color. Like I am barely touching my brush to the actual color. I've watered it down quite a bit and I'm painting all of the leaves in this image with that blue just very lightly. And then the sort of berry images, I'm actually just painting straight up with the blue, just getting that dark color because I'm not going to do any layering with those. And the leaves, I could leave as this. I've done multiple videos in the past, um, you know, doing the greenery in very non-traditional, non-realistic colors, depending on the color combo, you know, the color challenge I'm participating in, etc. You know, I'll do them in greens or grays or blues or purple, like whatever. But for this, I started with the blue and then I'm layering a green over it. This is sliced kiwi and layering these colors because they are a liquid form, like they layer really, really nicely. Um, and of course the blue reactivates as I'm adding the green to it. So they mix together and it just creates the prettiest shade of, you know, a blue green. So after I did the greenery, I'm doing the flowers and I'm only using one color for the flowers. I'm using the cameo pink and doing a first basically light wash with just, you know, the lightest shade, more water than color. And that's fine. But then it's always when you go in and add more layers that, that you know, it really shows the detail and makes everything pop. So I go in with the second layer of more color, less water. And just kind of adding color to basically kind of the edges of the petals, like the center edges. Again, I don't follow a whole lot of rules. I don't really too worry too much, especially with something like this. I do not worry about like light sources or anything. I'm just adding color. And then I actually go in directly with the Aquaflow brush just to add the deepest amount of color. Because again, it just gives it that extra something. So I just quickly go in. Everything's still kind of wet. So I can just quickly scribble in that color and it sort of blends itself. And then I made sure it's completely dry at this point. Definitely want it to be dry because I don't want anything tearing. I also don't want, you know, the color transfer transferring to my die cutting plates. And I ran this through my Platinum 6 machine with the coordinating wafer die for that stamp set. And then I pulled out my Mini Misty again and some soft navy cardstock. And I have a sentiment from the Everything Wonderful stamp set. So I used my anti-static powder tool, uh, brushed off the excess. And then I'm going to stamp this sentiment with that same clear embossing ink. I'm going to flip this cardstock around and stamp it a second time. So this way I've got both sentiments for both cards done on one piece of cardstock here. And then I'll coat this with that same detail white embossing powder. And then I'm going to um, heat emboss this. Now with this stamp set, the coordinating die, there's just a coordinating die for the floral image. There's no wafer dies for the sentiments. However, with this particular sentiment, they were just far enough apart that I was like, I can stamp these and then cut them apart because I didn't want a big chunky sentiment um, on my card. I wanted, you know, I'll just show as much of the florals as possible and the background. So after I heat embossed it, I actually pulled out my Fiskars paper trimmer. I could have used the Tim Holtz guillotine one that I always use, but I like the Fiskars one because it has the wire down the cut line so I can see exactly where I'm cutting. So I just lined up the sentiment and made sure the wire was right between the two portions of the sentiment and then I was able to just trim these apart into two separate pieces. Another thing you could do is cut your stamps apart if you want. Um, I've shown that in multiple videos. I know some people, it really bothers them <laughs> to cut their stamps apart. I don't mind it at all. It just depends on my mood, but this I found was just as easy. So, and it kept everything straight as well. So I just cut it apart with my paper trim and they're good to go. So after I trim them apart, I also of course trim down um, the edges and the sides of these sentiments to make everything, you know, look a little cleaner. And then after I finished um, trimming off all of these sentiments, since I had my Misty sitting right beside me, pulled that out again and the card fronts are of course dry by this point. So I can put the bases into my Mini Misty. I just let the front hang off the edge. Doesn't hurt anything. 
and then I'm going to reline up that large floral cluster and I'm going to stamp it on the inside of the cards with some Simon's Stamp Rosy Cheeks ink. This just kind of went really well with the pink I used on the florals when I was coloring. So I stamped that on the inside of both of these cards. Once I have these stamped, I'm going to grab another sentiment from the Everything Wonderful stamp set. And the sentiment I'm going to line up just kind of along the bottom inside of the card with my Mini Misty. And I'm going to stamp that with some soft navy ink. So get my sentiment lined up. Um, move my magnet over to make sure I've actually got everything in place and not fiddling. Anyway, um, ink up my stamp stamp it on the inside of the card and then I can put the other card base in here stamp that and then of course the inside of my card is finished and I've said this in other videos um, things like this where I've basically filled the inside of the card I write right over that like a ballpoint pen will write right over that no problem I'll write to my recipient I don't have any problems with that I just like adding it you know stamping that floral or whatever it is um, just to give the inside of the card that just extra something but yeah I'll write over it and be good to go. So I adhered those die cut florals to the card front with foam tape. I also used foam tape on the sentiments as well as a little bit of craft tacky glue just to adhere it over top of the florals. So it's kind of lined it up here and as always you could leave it here but I want to add embellishments of course and since I have these are all from the tonic like the embellishment mousse and some of the Aquaflow pens are all from the um, Blue Blossom release from Tonic. So I had all of the Nouveau drops that coordinated as well. So rather than use one color of Nouveau drops, I used all four because why not? So all my Nouveau drops, I just added all over this card. Um, and again, with these, if you find that ears have thickened because you've been using, you know, one of your favorite color, you've used it lots, it's been opened a lot, exposed to air, you can add a drop of distilled water to these as well to thin them out and usually they'll be good to go but just be very conservative with how much water you add because these bottles aren't very big so like start with like a drop of water and then go from there it also helps to warm them up if your office gets cold like my do mine does during the winter um warm them up i've shown on instagram i stick them in my bra it warms them up you know stick them under your leg stick them in your armpit whatever works for you just something to like bring the temperature of them up because if they're cold that's a lot of times the reason why they will peak and they won't smooth out and be nice nice embellishments and then another trick that i've shown and i'm showing again here is after i've applied them i gently tap my card front onto whatever and the tapping helps smooth out the embellishments and makes them look more like enamel dots so after I'm done tapping them, I'm happy with everything, how it looks. I set these aside and let them dry overnight and then they're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list with links to all the supplies I use. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs upping, everything. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.